Okay. In the previous class, we discussed about the equity portfolio management strategy, uh, which is the basic important concept we use on always in the investment literature in equity market. So, after that uh, we have uh, another concept which is very important in the context of investment or important asset or important financial asset what we uh, basically use to maximize our return sometimes in the financial market that is basically nothing but the bond. So, basically whenever we talk about the bond, bond is the financial instrument which is little bit uh, less risky as compared to equity as compared to equity. Therefore, certain investors who are uh, basically the risk averse investor relatively less risky investor or the risk averse investors participate in this market or in this instruments. Therefore, uh, the bond as an financial as a financial asset has its own importance in the economic or the financial literature. Therefore, after discussing about the different concepts which are involved related to the equity, it is also very much desired to know about the different characteristics of the bond and how this bond can be used as a profitable investment opportunity in the financial market. So, before discussing these things, let us see that what are those different features of a bond. Like that whenever we talk about the equity, it gives the return with a given amount of the risk and the return is varied in nature. It depends on uh, certain factors so which decide that how much return you are going to expect from that particular asset. But whenever we talk about the features of a bond, bond has a special characteristics uh, in this regard. Why? Because bond basically pay a fixed amount of the interest periodically to the holder of record and the repay a fixed amount of the principal at the date of maturity. So, whenever we talk about the bond, bond return is basically we get in two ways. One is your interest and what basically the interest which is paid periodically. That means, if somebody has invested in a bond, then the return is uh, uh, the interest what the uh, involved in this particular bond that is basically fixed, that is basically fixed. That means, uh, the particular same amount of the return he has to get monthly or quarterly or yearly on the basis of uh, the record what already uh, we have designed whenever the bond has been issued. And another one is your final principal payment, how much money you have received at the end of the end of the maturity date. So, these are the two components of the return or two components or two types of characteristics or two different characteristics what the bond has uh, in general. In general whenever we talk about a bond, bond basically uh, is defined as the two ways in terms of the return what this bond is trying to give to the bond investor. Then coming back to which are the different types of the bond market. Whenever we talk about the different types of the bond market and now accordingly the characteristics of the particular bond also changes. So, how this particular bond market is categorized? Uh, most of the bond market is basically where the bond is available or where the bond is traded. Because already what we have seen that whenever we typically we talk about a bond, bond has a coupon that means which is talk about the uh, interest fixed interest and another one we have that it has a term to maturity 
that means when this particular bond is going to be matured. Then finally, what we have, we have also the, we should know the market interest rate or we can say that how this particular bond will be discounted over the period of time. These are the three concepts which are related to the market. So, whenever we have seen that there is a coupon, there is a term to maturity, there is a market interest rate which are the different features which are involved in this bond, then the bond market is basically is defined on the basis of the term to maturity. The bond market is defined on the basis of the term to maturity. That means, if you see here, the basically talks about the money market, which is uh, basically dealing with the short term issues that mature within one year. Then we have the notes, what basically the intermediate term issued that mature between one year to ten years. Then we have the bonds, which is basically defined as the long term obligations with maturity greater than the ten years. That means, in conclusion or in summary, what we can say that uh, particularly this particular instruments, the bond instruments or the debt instruments, uh, which basically traded in a for a short run or basically the period within this one year, they are traded in the money market or they we call it the money market instruments. And this particular instruments, which where the term to maturity is between one year to ten years, they are sometimes or most of the times called the notes. And we have the typical bonds where the term to maturity will be more than 10 years. This is the way the uh, bond market has been categorized uh, in the various market in the world. And some cases also we can observe the bond market also can be defined on the basis of the ownership. And what is that ownership if you observe here? that the bond can be issued by the government, the bond can be issued by the corporate, the bond can be issued by the municipal which is municipal bonds, which is basically uh, is very popular in the, in the developed countries like USA. Then we have also the educational bonds, which is again involved in the US market, which is not that much popular in India. So, here who is issuing the bond that means, on the basis of the ownership, on the basis of the ownership the bond market has been categorized. So, on the basis of the ownership the categorization of bond market takes place. This is another way how the bond market can be also defined in a particular situation. So, this is the overall view of a particular bond, but whenever in general we talk about the bond market or whenever we talk about the actual characteristics of a bond, the characteristics are defined as uh, in four ways. One is your intrinsic features of the bond then the types of issues what the bond is trying to do, then you have the indexer provisions, then the finally the factors affecting the maturity or the term to maturity of the bond. These are the different way through which the bond characteristics are defined or which are the different characteristics of a bond that basically is uh, are defined in this way or one bond is different from another bond that basically this particular characteristics will distinguish. So, let us see which are those different characteristics. So, if you see that for first characteristics or what we have explained here that is your intrinsic features. Sometimes back I was just telling this, this issues in general, but if you talk about these things what basically talks about one is your coupon, coupon is basically indicates that. Uh, it is the indication or the, it indicates this income that the bond investor will receive over the life of the issue. For example, you have issued a bond uh, where the uh, let rupees a bond of 1000, 
and your coupon rate is 10 percent uh, which is mentioned here already in the record what you have received from the bond issuer. Then if your coupon let coupon is paid annually that means every year the bond investor will be receiving 10 into 10 that is your 100 rupees from this investment in the bond. So, that is that is why we call it periodically that income has been received from the bond issuer. Then you have the term to maturity. What do you mean by this term to maturity? It is basically the date or the number of years before a bond matures. That means, when this particular bond is going to mature, so that basically this term to maturity talks about. Term bond, we have two types of the bonds in this context on the basis of the term to maturity. One we define is term bond where the single maturity date will be mentioned. For example, let we say this bond will be matured after 10 years or this bond will be matured after 15 years. So, the term to maturity for this bond is either 10 years or 15 years. And another bond is serial obligation bond and in the context of serial obligation bond what we have seen that the series of the maturity dates will be there and on the basis of the different amounts what this particular uh, bond document has been on the basis of that the bond document has been written. Over the period of time after maybe 2 years this part of the bond will be matured and after 2 years this part of the bond will be matured this way the bond characteristics has been defined. So, therefore, we have uh, two ways uh, the we can define the term to maturity one is your term bond which has a single maturity date. Then we have another way we have serial obligation bond which talks about the series of the maturity dates. Then another feature already what I told you that we call it the principal or the par value. So, always remember this bond has been issued at par that means we call that there is a par value of the bond. So, it is basically the original value of the obligation. So, it is the original value of the obligation that means this much money or this much rupees you have to get at cert, after certain number of years or this much rupees or this much should be the value of the bond after the certain number of years and that certain number of years is basically defined as the term to maturity. So, that is the way that that means the particular value of the bond you should receive that 1000 rupees after 5 years or after 10, 10 years. So, that 5 years or 10 years or 15 years is defined at term to maturity and the amount what you are going to receive after end of the 15 years or the 10 years or the 5 years that basically is defined as the par value or the principal value of this particular bond. Then another feature we have that as uh, bearer bond and the registered bond. The bond which is bearded by somebody uh, which basically in anybody is, uh, is issuing this particular bond and anybody is investing this particular bond. Maybe sometimes what we have observed somebody is bearing this particular bond, but it has to be registered by somebody else. So, therefore, we have categorized into two types of bond one is only simple bearer bond and another one is the registered bond. So, these are the different intrinsic features of the bond. Then another way it has been defined that is the types of the issues. That means, how this particular bond has been issued, how this particular bond has been issued and uh, on that basis also the categorization of the bond can take place. How this can take place that whenever we talk about issuing a bond or you have deriving a bond from a, we, we have invested some money in, in into the bond, then how this particular bond has been defined on the basis of the issuer that if you see that you have a secured bond which we call it the senior bond, secured or the senior bond and another one is the unsecured bond. What do you mean by the secured bond? The secured bond is basically backed by a legal claim on some specified property of the issuer in the case of the default. That means, the secured bond has a mortgage 
uh, but basically whenever we issue this particular bond, we invest this particular bond and if there is a default, then the collateral or the mortgage will help to uh, liquidate and after this liquidation, you can realize that particular value, what value you are going to be the defaulter, for what value you are going to be the defaulter. That basically is talking uh, th means discusses about the secured bond, that way the secured bond is defined. But whenever you talk about the unsecured bond, basically sometimes we also we call it the debentures, it is basically backed by the promise of the issuer to pay interest in principal on a timely basis. That means, there is no mortgage is required for this and basically it is issued by the corporates. The debentures, the, the long term bonds which is issued by the corporates and the term to maturity is more than 15 years. And uh, the corporate basically whenever issuing this bond, uh, basically there is no mortgage involved in this, that is why it is little bit riskier than the bonds which is issued by the government. So, here what we have seen that here only this uh, agreement has been signed or the uh, promise has been made to uh, pay the interest in the principal on a timely basis, then the other things about the mortgage and the uh, the collateral etcetera etcetera is not mentioned, it is not required to issue this particular bonds uh, which is defined as the unsecured bond. Then another type of characteristics whatever we have that is basically your indenture provisions. What do you mean by this uh, indenture provisions? Indenture provisions are nothing but it is the contract between the issuer it is the contract between the issuer and the bond holders specifying the issuer's legal requirements. So, indenture provision is basically the contract or the legal document what basically we have always get or we have always uh, received these things and the, we have always written these things between the issuer and the bond holders. Uh, it is the contract between the issuer and the bond holders specifying the issuer's legal requirements and who basically write this indenture provisions, who basically decide this indenture provisions and there is a trustee acting on behalf of the bond holders ensures that all the indenture provisions are made including the timely payment of interest in the principal. That means, indenture provision is basically a legal document which is written between the bond issuer and the bond holders and whenever we write these things that indenture provision basically talks about when the payment will be made, how the payment will be made and what is the uh, time means what is the frequency on which this particular payment has been made. So, these are the different things or whether the if there is no payment in a timely basis then what should be done and what should be when this particular interest should be paid, up to what time the interest should be recovered from the bond investment and up to after what time generally this uh, principal should be uh, received. So, these are the different issues always the indenture provisions basically highlight. So, any investor who takes the position in the bond market, who basically try uh, tries to invest in a bond and basically they always write this indenture provision document which is a legal document written between the bond issuer and the bond uh, holder. So, this is the also one of the important characteristics always we observe in the bond investment part. Then there are the factors or the features which basically affecting the bonds maturity, why they term to maturity of this particular bond and how this particular term to maturity will be different from bond to bond. One we have defined as a short term maturity, long term maturity etcetera, but on the basis of the characteristics of the bond sometimes also the maturity changes and how this different characteristics of a bond basically changes the maturity. If you observe here, we have a callable bond, we have a non callable bond and we have a default call bond. What do you mean by this callable bond, non callable bond and the default call? Whenever you talk about the callable bond, it is basically what does it mean that any time the bond can be called by the bond issuer, that means there is a redemption of the particular bond will be possible at any time of the investment. But the non-callable bond, the this particular bond cannot be redeemed, it cannot be recalled back 
before they turn to maturity. That means, once this particular bond has been issued by the issuer, then until this particular term to maturity is not arrived or we have not reached to certain years, then the bond cannot be redeemed. But whenever we talk about the callable bonds, these bonds are highly risky or we can say this particular redemption of those bonds can be possible at any moment of time at any time whenever the bond issuer wants. So, therefore, we have a distinction between these two. And then another type of bond is deferred call. Deferred call means it is intermediary between the callable and the non-callable. Basically, it is, it is the uh, medium type of the bond which has some callable feature and which has some non-callable feature. How this uh, dual characteristics is possible? For example, somebody has issued a bond where the term to maturity term to maturity is 10 years. If the term to maturity 10 years and if it is a default call bond, if it is a default call bond what will happen in that indentured provision of the document it will be written that this particular bond cannot be cannot be called up to 5 years or the redemption is not possible up to 5 years. But after 5 years that means, up to 5 years it is a non-callable bond up to 5 years it is a non-callable bond then 5 years to 10 years it is basically a callable bond. That means, here what we are trying to do after 5 years once this 5 years is not completed then the bond issuer cannot go for redemption uh, go for redemption of this particular bond. But once this 5 years is completed the bond issuer can go for calling the bond at or the redeeming the bond at any point of time. So, those are the bonds which are defined as the default calls. Here how generally we calculate the return of a bond already uh, I have told you that the holding period return HPR basically represents the holding period return of a bond which is nothing but the what particular money what particular principal whatever we have this is your the market price of the bond I at the end of the period T and what is your interest payment you are getting from here that is your interest payment on the bond I and divided by the market price of the bond at the beginning of the period T. And here what you, you should know that the price of the bond in the different T plus 1 period will be changed because the market interest rate changes and how the valuation of the bond and etcetera will be done that we will see in the further sessions. But here if you see your SPR IT is nothing but the holding period for bond I during the period T, then P I T plus 1 is equal to market price of the bond I at the end of the period T and P I T is the market price of the bond I at the beginning of period T, then interest I and T I T is basically the interest payments on the bond I during the period T. So, finally, if you calculate your holding period yield is nothing but your holding period return minus 1. So, the holding period yield of a bond is calculated as the holding period return minus 1 and the holding period return is nothing but the market price of the bond at the time whenever the bond is going to be redeemed or maybe we are calculating for that particular future period and plus the interest what we have received from this divided by the market beginning price of this particular bond what on price on which price we have. Uh, basically received this particular bond at that point of time. So, this is the way the rates of return on the bonds can be calculated. Then if you coming back to uh, India what we have seen there are different bonds which are available. We have the money market instruments we already we have seen on the basis of the term to maturity the uh, categorization of the bonds also the bond markets can be made. So, in this context if you see in terms of India we have a money market instruments 
or we have a money market where the short term bonds are available. Then we have the government securities and the government guaranteed bonds and as well as the corporate bonds already what I told you on the basis of the ownership also the bond markets have been categorized and the different instruments have been issued by the different markets on the basis of the requirement of the investor. If you see the money market instruments which are those short term instruments which are available in the money market in India which will be uh, use the major instruments for the investment in the bond market. These are basically the treasury bills which talks about or which represent the short term obligations of the government uh, which is issued by Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the government of India and uh, it is a very short term there are various different maturity period available for this and basically we always say that uh, the investment in this kind of instrument like treasury bills are basically risk free investment that means once we have invested in those assets the return will be assured uh, because there is a guarantor that is the government of India or central government of India is the guarantor for that and it is issued by the RBI on behalf of the government. Uh, so, therefore, the maturity period can be varied from 91 days, 182 days and 365 days and we have also these are some 14 days instruments, but those 14 days instruments basically are used to finance this state requirements, uh, state government's requirements in the basis of ways and means. So, therefore, we do not consider that particular uh, uh, 14 days treasury bills as real investment for the retail investor which is regularly or which can be regularly used in the market for the investment. They do not carry any explicit coupon rate already uh, what means you should remember this is a very important point that they do not carry any explicit coupon rate there is no coupon rate mentioned this is basically uh, sold at discount and redeemed at the par and there is a very active secondary market for this because already you know what is the difference between secondary market because the existing transactions which are available in the market in the primary market that will be basically uh, transacted from one person one investor to another another investor in the secondary market and that way the liquidity of the secondary market will be more. So, therefore, what we have seen that in India we have a very good market for the treasury bills uh, which is highly liquid or we can say which is a successful market by any of uh, uh, the investment perspective. Then we have another instruments which is called uh, the certificate of deposits. Uh, what basically the certifi uh, certificate of deposits is? It, it represents a negotiable receipt of the funds deposited in a bank for a fixed period. Uh, they are sold at discount and redeemed at par value and there is very active secondary market for this also. That means, it is basically talking about a receipt uh, of the funds what has been deposited in a bank and you have given this note to somebody else or you have given this negotiable receipt to somebody else which talks about that this much money has been deposited in this bank for this particular period of time for which the bank is going to provide you the interest and as well as the other aspects what we have discussed about the bond characteristics. So, therefore, we have uh, the good certificate of deposits market in India which is very active in terms of their uh, secondary market uh, perspective. Then we have another instrument which we call it the commercial paper. Uh, it basically represents the short term unsecured promissory notes issued by the firms. Remember the certificate of deposits can be issued by the banks, but the commercial papers mostly issued by the uh, companies also. They are sold at discount redeemed at par value and there is not active secondary market for this. That means, the commercial papers are not actively traded in the market uh, and it is little bit riskier than the other instruments within the short term segment uh, because it is issued by the corporate, it cannot be issued by the government or it cannot be issued by the banks or any other financial institution uh, and it is again a short term instrument uh, which is used in this bond market in India. Then another type of uh, issue are in the market which are available, these are the government securities and the government guaranteed bonds. Uh, what basically this government guaranteed or the government securities are already I told you it is issued by Reserve Bank of India on behalf of uh, government of India and the state governments. And you remember in India we have uh, the different type of government bonds which are available on the basis of their term to maturity. 
we have up to 10 years bond uh, maturity, we have more than 10 years and maximum term to maturity bonds which are available in India is 30 years. That means, we can issue a bond up to 30 years, the Reserve Bank of India can issue a bond up to 30 years uh, term to maturity and it is basically issued by the Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the government of India and uh, the most of the government securities are long term in nature. So, the 10 years government securities, 15 years government securities, these are our government bonds which are basically discussed again or which can be considered again as the risk free investments in the market. If you are talking about the longer perspective, the investment in the government securities for a long period of time for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they are also considered is highly uh, risk free in that particular situation in the market. And uh, that is why in most of the cases, the government securities basically in the case of government securities, the interest payments are semi annually In every 6 monthly, the interest payments are taken place and they are essentially the medium to long term bonds. And I already told you that basically they are long term in nature and sometimes if you define the 5 years to 10 years as the medium term, then sometimes also those type of characteristics it is possible in case of the government securities or the government guaranteed bonds. Then you have your corporate debt or corporate bonds, there are different type of uh, corporate debts. Uh, we have a straight bond what we call it the plain vanilla bond, uh, whatever characteristics uh, we have talked about and we have seen uh, the same characteristics is uh, uh, if plainly it is given there is indenture provision, there is a coupon, there is a term to maturity and there is a par value etcetera, etcetera and there is no such kind of callable or other kind of uh, extra features for this particular bond and for this issuing that particular bond, then that particular bond is basically defined as the corporate bond, uh, sorry plain vanilla bond or this straight bond, which can be also issued by the corporate or the different corporate bodies. Then in this context, we have another bond we call the zero coupon bond, zero coupon bond from the name itself we could have judged that there is no coupon involved in this that is basically issued at par and redeemed at par. So, there is no such kind of uh, coupon is possible or timely interest payment is possible for this only at the end of the maturity the uh, total amount can be received by the bond investor instead of getting this coupons every periodical basis. Uh, then we have a floating rate bond, what does mean this floating rate bond? There are whenever we get this debts or the bond issued by the different agencies, uh, we have different type of bonds where we find we find that the bonds which have a fixed interest rate. That means, even if there is some adverse situation in the market, this interest rate is not going to be changed. <coughs> that means, the same amount of the interest we are going to pay. So, therefore, the people if they, they will feel that the interest rate expectation, the interest is going to be more in the future, then they generally take care of uh, or they hedge their risk by investing in those bonds where it is uh, in the fixed rate basis or they issued the bond on the basis of the fixed rate basis. But on the basis of the floating rate, on the basis of the market, on the basis of the external factors, the floating rate interest rate changes. And if the floating rate interest rate changes, basically it will little bit riskier because on the basis of the market situation, if the market dynamic changes, if the market fluctuation forces this particular bond issuer to change the interest and the basis on the basis of the timing of the market, on the basis of the requirements of the market, this particular interest rate also changes. So, therefore, we have two types of things here also what the corporate bodies generally issue. Then we have the different type of options embedded with the bonds, so that is why we call it the bonds with embedded options. A bond with embedded option means whenever we talk about uh, there are different other type of assets which are available that we will be discussing further in a larger way. But uh, if you see there are the other bonds also we have warrants, we have convertible debts, etcetera, etcetera. What basically they have, they are basically by nature they are the bonds, but otherwise they have the different special provisions by which the characteristics of the bond of those bonds will be little bit different. So, therefore, we call it bonds with embedded options. Then we have the commodity linked bonds which is nowadays also popular on the price of the bond will be varied on the basis of the price of the commodity because the in the derivatives market or the future market those kind of concept is highly used. So, therefore, corporate bodies can issue uh, 
the plain vanilla bond, they can issue a zero coupon bond, they can issue a floating rate bond or the fixed rate bond. They can also the issued some kind of other types of the bonds which has different other features. On the basis of the uh, basis of their features, this categorization of bond has been changed and as well as we have also the commodity linked bonds because if the price of a commodity changes, the value of the bond also changes. That can possible in the future market or the derivative segments of any of the countries. Then these are the uh, participant products of uh, uh, and products in the debt market if you see. Uh, these are the issuers that is the central bank and the state government, then the public sector units and then the corporates and the commercial banks. If you see the instrument, the central bank basically gives this uh, short term instruments like treasury bills like uh, and where the maturity period varies between 91 days to 364 days and the investors are basically the Reserve Bank of India. Then the state government issued the stated securities. Uh, what uh, basically maturity related securities means the uh, term to maturity is mentioned there, uh, where the term to maturity is 5 to 13 years and the investors basically from the state government uh, issued securities are the banks, insurance companies and the provident fund companies etcetera. They basically invest in the state government securities uh, issued to, to uh, the different customers on the basis of the requirement of the term to of the bond characteristics. Then the public sector units they basically issue the bonds which is uh, the term to maturity is varies between 5 to 10 years. The investors are basically that all the different banks may be public sector or the private sector banks. Then the corporates and the mutual funds and the individuals they basically invest in those kind of assets because uh, they on the basis of uh, their necessity on the basis of their requirement those kind of changes takes place in the market. Then you have the commercial banks which basically issue the certificate of deposits and uh, the term to maturity is quite low where the 15 days to 1 year for FIEs financial institutions uh, for, uh, for uh, to 1 year and for financial institutions it is 1 to 10 years and the investment basically made by the banks uh, then the mutual funds then individuals etc. The certificate of deposits is also one of the instrument which is very short term, but sometimes for uh, finance, uh, foreign institution, uh, for FIEs financial institutions this particular term to maturity can vary between 1 to 10 years. So overall if you want to conclude this table what is it trying to say? These are the different important issuers who basically issue the bond in India and uh, these are the different instruments what they provide and the term to maturity is mentioned. And finally, the investors can be identified basically we talk about the bigger investors or the institutional investors and the individuals also responsible individuals also invest in this government securities and the people who are little bit risk averse in nature and they take different position in the market uh, to get the return uh, from those particular bonds by minimizing their risk in the market. Uh, so, then coming back to uh, whenever we do the investment in the bond, uh, how this uh, uh, particular uh, bond investment quotes are looking like. Uh, whenever we talk about the bond quotes, uh, these are basically quoted on the basis of their yield or their price and the price of the bond changes on the basis of the change in market interest rates. Uh, so, what generally, how generally it quote? Uh, the quotation is uh, basically is mentioned by this way. For example, if you talk about the price quotes and the price quote when the price of the bond, price of the bond already I told you it is basically a function of uh, interest rate majorly. So, we will be discussing those things in detail in the next class, but here if you observe then how this price quote is made the price quotes are basically always are the percentage of the par value, par means we talk about the principal value and what it look like for example, it is written in like this by 2, then sometimes we refer it, it is uh, basically R S 98.5, but which is not true, it is basically talking about the 98.5 percent 
of the principal or the part. So, whenever we write this, for example, the principal amount is let the principal amount the example here it is given R S 5000, then the bond quoted, then the price of the bond, price of the bond at that particular time will be R S 5000 multiplied by the 98.5, uh, it is the uh, 0 0.90.5 percent that will give you 4098.4925. That means, in that particular time the value of the bond or the price of the bond will be 4925. Uh, like that what basically we talked about that the uh, bond quotations, the reading the bond quotation is very much important from the investors point of view and always they should know that how the quotation can be made and what is the interpretation of that quotation. In general, this is the way the corporate bonds is quoted. How generally it is uh, quoted in this way? This is your bond, this is your current yield and this is your volume, how, how much time number of transactions taken place here, that is your closing price, then your net change with respect to the previous year, uh, previous period. Let your bond is X, your current yield is uh, uh, let 7.7, .7. then your volume is let 52, then closing price is 15053 by 8, then how it is uh, denoted the, that means the X is issued uh, by so and so, for here it is let uh, example it is written ATT, that means the AT&T has been has issued this bond and uh, 52 of these bonds traded that day, because already number of uh, transactions what we talk about and the coupon is basically, uh, this is your uh, sorry I did not write it here, this is your coupon, this will be your 8.8 .8 by 1 by 8. Uh, which is talk about the coupon payments, which is a periodical in payment what you are going to receive, uh, which is given in the percentage term. So, 8 1 by 8 percent means it is written 8.125 percent. Uh, then your which will be maturing at the, this is your the 22 is mentioned here after this, this is your 22, that 22 is basically nothing but it is the term to maturity, if the bond is issued at uh, 2003, then let it 22 means it 2022 it will be matured. Then the current yield, which is basically coupon what you are receiving here divided by the market price, uh, we will be reading extensively those things afterwards. Uh, the current yield of this particular bond is 7.7 percent. So, the closing price uh, was 105 3 by 8 percent of par, uh, so which was up 1 by 4 percent from the priority. That is why the net change is also mentioned here, which is a plus 1 by 4, that means the price of the bond has gone up. So, what basically talks about if the price of the bond has gone up, then we can realize that or we can expect or we can conclude or we can infer that the interest rate in that particular day or interest rate in that particular period has gone down. Therefore, the value of the bond has gone up. So, there is inverse relationship between these two. Sometimes, the people use this uh, code notations whenever they record these things. So, whenever they re record it C V in short, that means it is defined as convertible. If they are writing Z R, we call it the zero coupon bond. If they write a D C, small d, small c, we call it a deep discount, that means at the time of the issuance and always the accrued interest must be added to the price and the calculated interest what we have, what we are paying must be added to the price what has been quoted there. Then coming back to the other aspects which talks about the bonds with uh, other embedded options, uh, then if you see that the, there are two, three features or two, three types of assets whatever we have. If you talk about one by one, 
then we have a warrants, then we have some convertible bonds and etcetera. And what basically the warrants means, the warrants are basically attached to the bonds or preference share to attract the investor. And what basically the warrant is, it is another variant of call option wherein the holder has the right to purchase shares of the company at some predetermined price. That means, if there is a warrant is related to this particular bond, then the holder of the bond will be given to the right uh, to the shareholder of this particular company, because uh, to uh, means uh, right has been given to that particular bond holder to repurchase the share at a particular time at some predetermined price. That means, price will be determined beforehand and there is a right has been given, whether the right has been exercised or not that is a separate issue, but the uh, issuance uh, or the particular uh, right has been given or the uh, chance will be given to the shareholder to uh, buy a share from this particular company at a predetermined price level. So, that is the basically the defined always we have warrant, sometimes it is related to the bond if there is a warrant feature involved in this in particular bond, then what we have to judge from there, may be that bond holder is uh, almost uh, very much uh, inclined or very much invested to this particular bond in the company, because in the future he can be the owner of the company or he could have some uh, shareholding pattern in, in the company, because that right has been given to him in a predetermined price whenever the share will be issued by the company. So, that is why to attract the investor, this kind of options will be created. Then how the warrant is different from the call option, because this is basically the future market call option, which always we have given the right to the buyer to uh, take the position in the market or uh, to exercise the price in the market. So, it is different because uh, basically on the basis of the corporate versus the investor, short versus the long period. And in the basically in the market, if you observe that uh, this particular thing from the investor point of view, but here the corporate is giving that particular chance whether there is a warrant or not, but the call option position basically taken by the investors to decide that or to get how much return he is going to be realized after so and so date. And uh, another thing here is on the basis of the period also, sometimes we find that uh, the uh, warrants are basically. Mm, we can say the short period basis, but in the long period sometimes the call options also may not be exercised very shortly, it may take a longer period, but it is a, one of the additional points what we are going to discuss, but uh, little bit there is a difference from the issuance point of view and from the characteristics point of view, how these warrants can be different from the uh, this uh, call options. And particularly which are the dominating factors which uh, decide this uh, warrant or which affect this warrant. One is your expiration period when this particular call option is going to be expired. Then the variability in the stock price, leverage provided by the warrant, then the dividend payout ratio. You see, you see that what basically talks about that it is giving the right to the bond holder or the bond investor to uh, take a position in the market in such a way or they can buy some shares from the market with a predetermined price, but how this bond holder or the investor is going to decide that what should be the price level, whether the price is really a good price what he is going to pay for this particular bond or the price level of this particular stock is more fluctuating. Therefore, it is very difficult to decide how much price I should uh, uh, give for this particular stock. So, therefore, what basically we can see that when this particular warrant is going to be matured or the particular option is going to be expired, accordingly this investor or the bond investor basically sees that how the particular stock price is fluctuating. If the variability will be more, he may not be interested, but if he can find out a range how this price, whether the, how much price he is going to uh, pay for this uh, holding this stock and uh, he is very much little bit assured in the, his point of view then maybe it is uh, easy to decide that whether he should go for uh, exercising that warrant option or not. That is why we can see that variability of the stock option is uh, or the variability of the stock price is basically important feature or important concept what this particular bond holders always try to see. Uh, then also we have seen that uh, the factors like a dividend policy who decides this uh, particular stock return 
are one of the factors who basically decide that how much return we are going to expect from the market that also basically sometimes decide that whether we should exercise this option uh, or not. And another one is the leverage provided by the warrant, leverage means what we refer talking about that the facilities or the benefits or the debts what we are going to provide on the basis of the warrant that is also one of the factors which decide that how whether the warrant will be exercised or not. Then another type of uh, uh, bonds so with some embedded options are uh, basically convertible bonds and I hope most of you must be aware about this convertible bonds. Uh, uh, the convertible bonds is nothing but it is a corporate bond with a call option to buy a common stock of the issuer. That means, after a stipulated point of time, this particular bonds can be uh, converted into the shares of the common equity of the company. Therefore, the particular investor who is investing in this particular bonds may be uh, considered as the owner of the company. So, the number of shares of common stock that the bond holder can receive from existing the call option from exercising this call option of the convertible bond is called the conversion ratio. For example, you are issuing a bond of 20,000 rupees and the value of this particular bond you are holding a bond of 20,000 rupees and the value of the bond is uh, sorry value of the stock is 100 rupees then accordingly this uh, you have to convert those uh, values of 20,000 into uh, the different uh, number of stocks how much you should own for that particular company in that particular time. So, that particular um, exercise uh, whenever we do that basically we call it the conversion ratio. Uh, then the another concept related to this which is called the strike price or exercise price at which the investor exchanges the bond for the shares is called the conversion price. That means, the price at which particularly the uh, share price on which the conversion takes place between these two bond and the stock and the bond can be converted into the stock that particular thing we define as the or we define as the conversion price that is defined as the conversion price. Then another concept is your floating rate nodes. What do we mean by this floating rate nodes? This is basically a bond issued for medium to long term which pays coupons that are pegged to a level of certain floating index which is called the reference index and what are those features, features are there uh, is, is as a reference index, this has quoted margin to reference rate which is basically the default risk premium, it is reset frequency the period of coupon payment and for observation when you should know this that is a for, for index you have to give in, you have to be given uh, also for that uh, you, will, you will be getting that then you have the maturity date. So, uh, the floating rate nodes are little bit different from the bonds in this regard. So, what we have seen here the there is a plain vanilla bond whatever we have, we have a term to maturity, we have a coupon, we have a uh, also the market interest rate, but another way also the, there are certain embedded options whatever we have and if you have those options there that is a call option, there is different kind of uh, warrants and etcetera will be put there the characteristics of the bond will be different. And the bond investor whenever invest this particular bond and they always want to maximize the return then how this bond price changes and why it changes and what are those different factors which affect the bond pricing and how this valuation of the bond takes place and in the different scenario that and also the for the embedded options that we will be discussing in the next class. Thank you.